and Lance Austin, who we're going to watch right now. Uh, Lance Austin broke serve. He won game one. Carpenter won game two. So Lance should be on the play here for game number three unless somebody is taking the Tom Ross approach and drawing. Mm -hmm. Probably not for this matchup. I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah. Right there with you. These players will lay out their openers. We'll be starting here in just a moment. Again, winner of this going to play against David Sharfman. Sharfman looking for his third SEG Tour win. Pretty impressive stuff. With an off-the-radar deck, but still doing the right stuff. Carpenter going to send it back. Lance Austin going to stick and stay with his hand. Though very impressive for Sharfman. Given the nature of this top eight and how fast it is, he has an opportunity to win this whole thing as the eighth seed. And we're looking at a bunch of 3.5 decks. So that is quite the accomplishment to be able to win these matches on the draw. I agree. He's, he had to get through Ely's deck, capable of turn three kills. Mm -hmm. Affinity, a 3.5 deck, probably closer to turn four, but still a 3.5 deck. Yep. And then Infect in the finals, should he be able to win that match as well. Carpenter going to scry. He's going to put this one to the bottom. Lance Austin will start with the Gataxian Probe. We take a look at the opening hand of Gataxian Probe for Bradley. Along with a Noble Hierarch, a Pendlehaven, a Forest, a Might of Ocrosia, and a Dismember. Keep in mind, he did scry to the bottom, so no Infect threat just yet. Yeah, this is a fine six-card hand. Uh, seven cards without an Infect creature, I think you've got to consider sending this one back. Uh, but on six cards already, this is a, a very solid hand. Both colors of mana, some acceleration, a redraw, a removal spell, a pump spell. Good mixture of cards, just missing an Infect creature. Yep. Sure, where Austin's going to start things. He could in this thing real fast if he's got a good hand. It's windswept teeth and just a passing of the turn. Nothing all that exciting. Carpenter will draw a copy of Mutagenic Growth. Probe. There's another probe over there for Austin. Blighted Agent, Vines of the Basswood. An Ink Moth Nexus. An Apostle's Blessing and a Mind of Old Crozier. So a pretty good hand there for Lance. Yeah, solid hand. Uh, he does have to play around the Dismember now, so you can see he's trying to slow roll a little bit. Maybe gets a Blighted Agent with Apostle's Blessing back up and so forth. Uh, willing to slow roll, slow roll the Gataxian Probe, I believe, because there really wasn't any card that he could draw that would change his path on that turn, and he'd rather have more information on Carpenter's draw steps. Another Mutagenic Growth to draw there for Carpenter off of the Probe. A Forest, Noble Hierarch. This will give Carpenter the mana advantage, at least for right now, as Austin will sacrifice that Windsweb Teeth. Going to fall down to 17. I think we'll see a breeding pool here in just a moment. So Carpenter's hand here, uh, excellent if he's able to find an Infect Threat. Because mm -hmm. he's got a removal spell, he's got a lot of pump. But his hand doesn't really go anywhere until that happens. And Austin is... With on two infect creatures with evasion, the blighted agent and the ink moth nexus. So the one copy of Dismember only buys Carpenter so much time. Over to Lance we go. Looks like he picked up a land. Didn't get a great look at it. I think it was another copy of Ink Moth Nexus, however. And it was. And now he's just got to figure out how he wants to navigate the turn. I suspect on the previous turn, uh, I can respect why Austin did want to cast the Gataxian Probe, try to get a little more information. I think I would have been inclined to, because if he draws Glistener Elf or Noble Hierarch, it's just so good to be able to do something on the first turn. Mm -hmm. There is Inkmoth Nexus. And now, of course, the question now, if you're Lance, is do you actually just want to play the Blighted Agent into this? I think he's better served waiting one more turn, playing the Blighted Agent with one mana up so he can cast the Apostle's Blessing. Well, Carpenter's turn's pretty good. He just drew a copy of Blighted Agent. Perfect draw. Yeah. Especially given the nature of his hand. I mean, he's uh, perhaps ready to go next turn, in fact. Yeah, he has a, he's got a kill rolled up next turn. Yep. Uh, Might of Old Crozier, two Mutagenic Gross. That's eight, one from the Blighted Agent is nine, one from Exalted and or Pendlehaven is ten. Now, Austin can't interact with this. 
You see the hand. Because the he, goods. He's got a Vines of the Vastwood in his hand, does mm -hmm. Lance Austin. As we take a look at Vines of the Vastwood, it's a little bit of a weird card, but it does play a pretty big role in the mirror. For those of you who have not ever played the Infect Mirror, Vines of the Vastwood, you can actually target opponent stuff, too. Yes. Comes up in fringe cases. We see this more frequently in Legacy when people are trying to fizzle Umazawa's Jite equipping. Mm -hmm. It's an oddball. The target creature can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control this turn. So you can kind of block their pump spells with mm -hmm. this. Huge, huge draw there for Austin. He find a dismember? Yes, he did. And that's a pretty big find. These games can be swingy. That's for sure. And now I think Lance is trying to figure out, okay, how do I kind of walk him into this? It's hard to trap in this spot because Carpenter will likely go untap, out of a Pendlehaven, attack with Blighted Agent if there's any mana up. At that point, you're kind of forced to dismember, and then the two mana Genic Rose play over the top, and you take some damage. So maybe it's a spot where you can't get too cute and you just say dismember now. Uh, yeah, I think you can just dismember now. Play your Noble Hierarch that you just drew. Keep a mana up. And then hopefully next turn, then you can start to play your Blighted Agent, or you can start attacking with your Inkmoth Nexuses, whatever you want to do. But the clock is not that bad for you here, I suppose, if you... If you dismember straight away, if you trade off with the two Mutagenic Rose, assuming the Carpenter activates Pendlehaven and then uses two Mutagenic Rose to save it, then you're on... Then you got two, maybe three turns to find another answer or to kill on the way back. And uh, I think Austin's hand may allow him to do that. Inkmoth Nexus is the land for the turn. You can see it's a tough spot here for Lance, that's for sure. Trying to plan out these turns. You get it wrong, you die. Yeah, I mean, the question that Lance has to answer, do I have the luxury here of trying to trap? Can I get something good out of this? Or do I just need to fire this off straight away, knowing that I can't kill the Blight Agent, but at least getting enough pump spells out of Carpenter's hand that the clock is slowed down by a turn, possibly two. I think the problem is that if Law if Austin gets fancy here, Carpenter keeps the Blighted Agent and deals some damage, and the clock is tight enough that taking some damage next turn might shrink the clock by one turn, and the game is going to be played on a very tight timeline. Well, Austin's not going to play anything. He's just going to pass the turn back. Carpenter is going to do exactly what you said, which is going to Pendlehaven his Blighted Agent. Yep, doing this before combat, before the Exalt trigger. And now he's going to play Mutagenic Growth. Do you like doing this now? Uh, yeah, because he can still play over the top of a dismember. Sure, because we are still in his main phase, so Mighty Will Crozier does a nice job of that. Right. Sure. And this was what I was concerned with with Austin waiting. I know that he, he can't get the Blight Agent, and he was hoping to trap, but unless Carpenter gets really sloppy, it's not going to happen, and he's going to take some points of damage this turn. You wonder how familiar Lance so Austin is with the with the infect. This mirror. is the alternative line, and this might be what Austin is trying to set up here. Is if Carpenter pushes but doesn't go for lethal this turn, and you extract some of the pump spells out of the hand, then you can untap and on your own turn dismember and maybe get rid of it. Okay. The problem is that I think Carpenter is likely to present lethal. He's he may force Austin's hand on using the dismember. At that point, you're not killing the blade agent and you're taking a bunch of damage. Mm -hmm. So assuming that Carpenter is aware of the possibility to dismember and navigates this correctly, I think Austin's going to end up a little jammed up here. Because this Blight Agent is 2, plus the Mutagenic Growth gets to 4, plus the Might of Alcrocia gets to 8, plus the Exalted Trigger up to 9. Mm -hmm. So maybe Austin can afford to take this hit and try to get it next turn. Well, if he just takes all the damage, he would he would die. Pendlehaven makes it a two, Mutagenic Growth makes it a four, Exalted Trigger makes it a five, Mighty Crochet makes it a nine, Mutagenic Growth makes it an eleven. Oh, the second Mutagenic Growth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he is so presenting lethal. Yeah, in this he's spot. presenting. Le he's, he has the option to present lethal now if he wants to. Exalted Trigger on the stack. Here's Dismember. So right now it's a 4-5. Mm -hmm. 
The Exalted Trigger has not resolved. So now, Carpenter says, all right, uh, maybe Mutagenic Growth. Yeah, yeah there, there are basically two lines of play that I could buy from Austin's perspective. One is kill the Blight Agent on my turn just to trade with, or try to dismember her on my turn just to trade with some pump spells and hope that I can win the race. The other line of play is hope that Carpenter kind of makes a move here and pumps, but not all the way to lethal, and then I can untap and finish it off with a dismember. Getting engaged in combat with the dismember, not killing the blight agent, and taking some damage is kind of the worst of both worlds. Yeah, you never want to get engaged in combat against Infect when they have all these pump spells. You end up taking a little bit of damage, sometimes some unnecessary damage. If Austin had a second copy of dismember, and he could kind of like float through one turn, trade off, and then dismember to kill on the second turn, you could talk me into it. With the one dismember, I think he had to pursue a different line. Yeah, it's a different story, then. To Lance Austin we go. And he's got a lot of options now. He's going to start by activating Ink Moth Nexus. Maybe. I don't love that. I don't think he's in a position to do that. Well, it looks like that's what he might do. Well, I think Carpenter's more than happy to take one Infect right now. Yeah, I mean, this race is good just on the surface, plus Carpenter has a dismember in hand in case something wonky starts happening. Yep. It's not lethal just yet, but it sure is close. Might have hold Crozier plus the Pendlehaven plus the Exalted Trigger. That's six plus one from Blight Agent is seven. Here's just member on the unstep. Now's as good a time as any. Because again, you don't want to cast a spell like that when you're engaged in combat. Yep. We saw what happened in the last turn for Lance Austin. And really, Austin, there's no real benefit for him fighting over this. And being down a resource kind of stinks now if this does resolve. And a, a, a concern that I had with Austin's line of play last turn is he ended up burning two mana. He's got a lot of cards in his hand. The game's likely to be over inside of two turns, one way or the other. Uh, and I just don't feel like you can afford to burn off mana in a game that th is this tight and likely to be over this fast. Austin, again, taking a long look at that hand. However, if he does something along the lines of Apostle Blessing here, he's just going to die. Yep. And losing a, but uh, losing a land here is especially painful after last turn burning off the two mana. Yep. You can just feel his hand a little being a little constrained right here. He's got a lot of very good options for even one mana, but he doesn't really have one mana to spare. Mm -hmm. Back over to Bradley Carpenter. He'll draw a card. Yeah, Kataxian Pro is a real nice draw. He gets to see what the heck's going on. You can see the hand here. Blighted Agent, Twisted Image, Apostle's Blessing, Might of Ocrosia, Mutagenic, oh, excuse me, Noble Hierarch, and Divines of the Vastwood. All of these, the most relevant Divines of the Vastwood. We'll take a look at Apostle's Blessing really quick because the text on that one gets a little bit wonky sometimes. Just want to make sure that it can't target the other way. Vines of the Vastwood, a great draw there for Bradley Carpenter. It says target artifact or creature you control. Yep. Most important part. The thing is, if Austin wants to hold up a mana here, Carpenter can just go, Pendlehaven, my thing, attack you with Exalted, pass. Yep. And, and Austin's just not in a position to hold up one mana. It's especially rough in the face of Carpenter having drawn the vines because the best thing that Austin could have do with his one mana left over this turn is Twisted Image to cycle on the Noble Hierarch, and now that's cut off too. Yep because Carpenter can just fizzle it. Oh, do the twist. I almost kind of like fizzling it with, uh, yeah, with Might of Crozier and saving your vines, because that's the one he doesn't know about. 
not only does he not know about it, but it protects him from something drawn off the top, like another dismember to take care of the one infect creature. Yeah, I like that a lot. It's a little rough to let him draw a card there in that spot, but the flip side is Austin's so tight on mana that he's unlikely to deploy everything in his hand anyway. Mm -hmm. So a little of, a, a, of an unorthodox play there from Carpenter. I think usually instinctually you just say, okay, well, I'm going to fizzle your cantrip. That's usually an attractive line. But you can see Austin's hand is just clogged. Carpenter is playing a much more efficient game. And the opportunity cost of using his mana on anything that doesn't impact the board is so high because he just dies on the way back. One of the things that you consistently like to talk about is just, you know, in spots like this, you just got to get the cards out of your hand and convert them into something. And yep. I think we might see Lance end the game with five? Six spells. Six spells. spells. Yeah. Not, not Lance and spells. Carpenter is going to do the twist here, I think. I, I actually like not doing the twist. It's a little bit more risky than I think is necessary. Now he can, because he's got vines up to protect his creature. You can see Carpenter, no interest in exposing himself to a dismember here. Mm -hmm. And there are three in Austin's deck post-board, so it's not, not trivial odds here, especially with with Austin playing this kind of unwieldy game and and really going through some hoops here to leave up some mana, it's easy to believe here that he would have a dismember in hand. Well, going to try to do the twist. Clear for takeoff. Lines of the fast with a kicker. Absolutely. Bradley Carpenter is going to win this match over Lance Austin. Two games to one. The infect mirror goes to the player on the left. And for Bradley Carpenter, he's going to play against someone he's familiar with in David Sharpman in the finals. It's infect versus... Gordon's Vengeance. There were two turns there of Austin, uh, I think, being inefficient with his mana. Set aside the dismember play and whether the timing of that is correct or not because there's a lot of different circumstances that go into that line.